Hello, and uh, welcome to Let's Talk About God for another week of discussions uh, about our, our Lord and Savior. This week, we have uh, Hyper uh, presenting, a, presenting a sermon on worship. But before we get into uh, the sermon uh, titles and stuff, um, I want to say, make sure everyone I say welcome to everyone. It's good to see everyone again. Rod, you've been uh, holidaying and vacationing and and living the good life for a little while, but it's good to see you back. Good to be back. And and, and enjoying yourself and uh, <clears throat> and back for another discussion. It's good to see you two, uh, Hyper as our presenter, and obviously Anthony and James. Um, welcome back. Again, uh, we're going to be talking about this subject, or Hyper will be presenting this subject entitled Worship. He's, I think he's a little bit concerned because he knows it's a well, he doesn't know, but he, I mean, he has communicated to us that it is a pretty difficult subject, and obviously, um, we're not going to exhaust um, the subject of worship uh, in our uh, under 60 minute um, um, sermon or d d sermon and discussion with Q and A's. Um, but um, we're going to we're going to have a, a good time doing it. We're going to I'm sure we're going to laugh and we're going to share some things and uh, may God's Spirit move and uh, open up our minds to receive, but also open up our minds to recall the things that we've studied in the past and that we can uh, share and bring to light in this, uh, this very uh, deep subject of worship. Also, you know, once uh, Hyper finishes this sermon, we obviously will open up the, uh, this platform for um, question and answers. Um, the questions are not solely directed towards our presenter. It is directed towards the, the platform and all the guests and speakers on the platform to be able to answer or even to comment on <clears throat> uh, at their own um, discretion. Uh, we only ask that you just use a Bible uh, verse or a Bible story to support your answer, um, um, uh, your answer to your question. Uh, what was I going to say? Also, we're not trying to tell anyone what to believe. Uh, we believe that uh, what Paul said in Romans 14, 5, let every man be convinced, let every man be um, believe according to the dictates of their own conscience. And uh, we, we believe that the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts hearts and, and changes hearts and, and not us. Uh, no, not, no matter how long we want to have a discussion or a debate, our words don't penetrate the heart. It is God uh, with, the, with his spirit that moves upon the heart. And um, with that being said, uh, lastly, uh, before I hand it over to Rod for our prayer, I'd just like to say, if any of you would like to join us, because uh, you've heard a, a great uh, sermon discussion, you heard some great Bible verses, you may have heard some points of discussion, you're like, oh, I never heard those before. Or you can say, oh, yeah, I have heard those, but it's really good to hear it in a different light. Or if you have a specific sermon you would like us to share on, or if you have some Bible verses you'd like us to share, please feel free to reach out to us at let's talk about God three at gmail.com. Or you can reach us on Facebook at let's talk about God. And please subscribe to us on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel on let's talk about God. If you subscribe, it'll be awesome. And you can also reach us and contact us there as well, too. Um, with that being said, that concludes my introduction. And I'd like to hand it over to Rod for our opening prayer. Okay, let's pray. Um, gracious Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to be here and discuss your word so we can learn more about you and the way you run the universe. Mm -hmm. We ask that your spirit will join us today, enlighten and open our minds to understand your character, to worship you and follow in your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Sean, I love your welcome for your introduction. Thank you. Thank you. And um, Rod, thank you for the prayer. Um, it's, it's a place that we come together and we need God to speak to us. Um, I hope the time that we spend tonight together will be enjoyable, but will also be a blessing to all and for us as well. Um, I, I sometimes wonder if I if I should, um, should just cut things short, but sometimes I can't. Um, there's a few verses that I really want us to get through. So if you are patient, if there's any questions, maybe you can ask it in between and you want to say something. 
Now, my topic is worship today. And, and my question, I'm not putting it now out to you. I'm just saying my question to myself and to everybody, why does God want us to worship him? Um, if we look at humanity itself, humanity, we've got some people it's called idols. Some people it's called movie stars. Some people, um, they become singers and everybody adores them and follows them and watches them. And they love them. They want to be worshipped almost. And um, you, you ask yourself, from what place do they want to be worshipped? From what place does it come? Does it come out of love? Or does it come out of a selfish desire as humanity? And, and does God worship when he asks us to worship him only is god selfish or is he or is it because of love and while we go through this <clears throat> it's important that we keep these things in mind to this topic of worship so what is worship in hebrew the hebrew word for worship is sheka means to depress to bow down or to fall down flat now when i read this i had a smile on my face you know why? Because when I go to church each week to worship God, I've never seen somebody laying flat in church. So uh, maybe maybe it's a form of, of humbleness, but I know it probably means to bow down. Now, why don't we see people laying flat or laying down? I did it once in my bedroom by myself when I wanted an answer from God. And I think the answer didn't come that time, but it did come afterwards because I always think about it when, when truth is revealed to me. All the questions I had that night has been answered. Um, it is a picture. What is it? What does, what does this show? What does this show when it says bow down, fall down, um, um, depressed? And, and it's a picture of humility before Yahweh. When we go to church, we, we, we bow down and we worship him. What does it, what does it mean to, to fall flat or to bow down and also to adore, to admire? What do you think it means, just the word worship? Just quickly, if you want to answer, just step, just worship. What do you think about worship? Well, I... I, I Anybody can say something if you don't have. Okay, let's leave it for later then. Maybe so, we'll someone, up. someone that you look up to. Yes. Someone that you that is uh, is is more than me. And, yeah. and and like you said, to to lay prostrate down and bow down is showing um, respect uh, and reverence, showing um, gratitude. Um, showing appreciation and obviously, as you said, showing love yeah. for that person. And can 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 oh, somebody do that for I, the wrong reason? Sorry. Yep. Um, I was gonna go with um, worship is uh, yes, it's someone you look up to, but I think there's um, I think more than me is really good and. Uh, what I'm thinking is you're, you're, you're esteeming this person's wisdom above yours and above everybody's wisdom. Mm. Like you are saying, this is the person does, that knows what's good, what's right. And if I'm confused, I'm just going to go with this person's judgment. Mm. So I think the, the closest explanation to it is the way a child looks up to their parent mm. uh, at the beginning before they realize that there are other people who are bigger than dead, stronger than dead, more, more intelligent, all this. <laughs> before that, when, when they think the biggest, the greatest, the best is mom, right? That's worship. Uh, that's worship. But the only difference is for a child, they have no choice. Like it's almost like they, they have to do it. But for an adult, this is a this is a humbling of oneself to actually realize. I don't know if you can call it humbling yourself, but it's realizing your position in life that you've been putting yourself at a place that you don't belong. 
there's actually somebody who knows. There's somebody who actually is a safe place for you and where, where you can actually connect and grow. Mm. So uh, <clears throat> that's what I mean when I say worship. I've not looked at the dictionary like you did. Yeah. That, that's that's <laughs> roughly that's awesome. what I think. James? For me, worship it also means honor. And I, I found a verse from Matthew chapter 15, verse eight and nine. He said, uh, I, think, I think it's these verses, if I'm not wrong. He said, uh, these people who know me with their lips, but their heart are far from me. Mm. Their worship of me is pointless because their teaching are rules made by human. Mm. You know, I believe worship is honor as well. And is that Where the is reason? That, is that the reason the Bible said, honor your father and your mother? Mm. And God is our father, our creator. I believe uh, worship is also his honor. Thanks. James, James, where did you find that? Rod wanted to know. Yeah, you what first verse, verse were you? Um, I think, I think if I'm not wrong, is in Matthew chapter 15, verse eight to nine. Okay. And, um, yeah. and and James and Anthony, all what you've said is is actually the definition. In Christianity, worship is an act of attribute. We, mm -hmm. we it's an act of attribute, reverent honor, like you said, James, mm -hmm. and homage to God. So it's an it's something we give to God. It's not something He wants if we can't give it to Him, if we if if we don't know Him. And also, uh, Sean touched on, on respect. Yeah. That is a very good thing. Respect. Reverence. Yeah. yeah. Reverence, respect. Yeah. Rod, are you all good? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So, so when, when we see this importance that you can see, I believe worship is a very important part of our life, of, of how we live. Why do I say this? Um, you know, when you've got a bucket that has a hole in it, right? Mm. And you fill it with water. Where do you have to keep on staying to keep the bucket full? What did you say? Repeat that again, please. When you have a bucket with a hole in it at the bottom. Yeah, yes. Where, where do you have to stay to keep the bucket full? In, on There's the water. water. You have to keep it under the faucet. You have to keep it under the fountain. And, and keeping the bucket under the fountain, you keep on filling it. And this is what God actually wanted from us, to stay under his glory, to live under his glory, to live under his blessing, his gifts, his everything that he gives us. But we have holes in it. And, and I must say, some of us have more holes than others. And some of us don't even want to fill it up and they run dry. And that is the saddest part of life. <coughs> When we stop and worship God, when we decide to go away from the creator of the universe and the creator of this earth, we become this in disarray. And we can see it in the world today. So, so look at David's description in the Psalms 27 verse 4. And David says this, he says, one thing I have desired, see the importance of it, of the Lord, that I will seek, we will Anthony, you spoke a little bit about this, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold, why is he doing that? The beauty of the Lord. And to inquire in his temple. Behold, the beauty of the Lord is a gift. The beauty that God gives us is a gift. To inquire is also a gift. Because when we are beholding the beauty, he says then to inquire in the temple is almost making a request or trying to understand or trying to get something that gives him understanding. You're saying something, Anthony? You're speaking? Oh. Okay. If, if we can, if we, uh, according to just the verse you just read in Psalm 27, verse 4, where he said, that will I seek. Yes, and, and 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 if we still, if people still today can seek God, can mm -hmm. seek His glory, that means the exalted power are within the reach 
of everyone even today. Oh, thank you, James. That's mm. so beautiful. It's there for everything. Nobody, yeah, amen. Under, mm. under what you say there, nobody can be excluded. Mm. Even a bucket that has everyone the holes under it. Yeah. Because they will always be filled with water. Mm. And, 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 and that beauty, the glory of God, that beauty, we know it's the glory. It's God's character. It's who God is. That mm. gives us life. And we'll go further into the verses where we'll see this beautifully unfold. The mm. law of beholding. Now, when there's a law, in, even in, in society today, in science, in psychology, they will tell you the law of beholding. You become what you behold. You become what you behold. And 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18 answers this and, and shows us this. We all with unveiled faces beholding as a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed in the same image from glory, from more water to more water, sorry, from glory to glory, just as by the spirit of the Lord. Mm. First John 4 verse 19 says this too, we love him because he first loved us. Love begets love. We will never be able to love God if God doesn't love us. If we don't feel love, if we don't know that we are loved. A memorial of creation and redemption. You know, God gave us a memorial. Sorry, I should have started. God gave us a memorial for creation and redemption. God instituted a memorial in creation that we, that we can and continuous be recreated when he created humankind. He created in the beginning, when he created humankind, he created a memorial to, to be reminded of his creation, but the recreation is doing always in our hearts and minds. Genesis 2 verse 1 to 3 says, Thus the heavens and the earth, and this is the memorial, thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because he rested from all his work which God had created and made. It was Adam and Eve's first day. Remember, it was Adam and Eve's first day. And they rested. The first day they rested. And then, who did, they, who did they rest in? What was that rest? It was resting in Christ. Adam and Eve also had to rest in Christ. And then when they rested in Christ, which is in relationship, God says, go, go, what did they do on Sunday the next day? Go and take care of the garden. Go and do the work that you need to do. But first, we need to rest in Christ. Can I so ask this, a, a question, Iper? Yep. Many Christians will say, the Sabbath day is not for us Christians today. The mm. Sabbath day is for the Jewish people in the Old Testament. Yes. And uh, they said, you will see for yourself, because if they didn't keep the Sabbath or anything they did wrong that day, there is a death penalty, there is a death degrees upon them. Hmm. How can we ex explain to those people who put this death degree there? How can we explain to people the Sabbath day is still here today? He still he, and, and he will come in the future and he will be on earth eternity eternity hmm. you know you know james when we look at memorials and reminders it always needs to have a meaning to it hmm. um my my grandfather died in the war in south africa right he went in italy and he passed away in italy when i came to australia i we never because South Africa never felt like our country, although we, we, we felt part of it, but it never felt like our country. So we never had the real pride. Only in Australia, when, when people were celebrating Anzac Day, I realized that there were so many people who died in the war 
And my uncle also died in war, you know? And it's said, it's a reminder of what sin and what humanity can do to one another. And, 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 and it has more meaning now than what it had before. So what I'm trying to say is, unless we add meaning or understanding of what the Sabbath means, and that is what I'm trying to, to get through this worship, what I get we will never you, be able, sorry? We will never what I get from you right now for my question, yep. the death degrees is not made by God, it's made by man, isn't it? Yes. Yes. yes, that's what we shall want to say. And, Thank you. And, and we will see, we will see that the Sabbath gives life. I'll, 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 we will see that the Sabbath is life itself mm -hmm. as we go through. So, so, so when Adam and Eve rested in Christ, what do you think they saw? What do you think they, I'm just, just thinking, what do you think they were doing the first day of rest? And I <clears throat> I reckon they were just in awe, man. Like he said, <laughs> when they behold, to behold his creation and what he had done and and even themselves. And I would just, you just lay there in awe and, and in worship and, um, and, uh, and just honoring, as, as I think James said, honoring the Lord and, and just being like, wow, is this for real? Like, did that happen? And did you just do that? And man, yeah, you you are due our homage because you are that the true God. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there was, don't you think there was so much joy looking in his wife's face, Eve, looking at creation, look at he felt love all around him. Adam, I'm just talking about Adam. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't know how Eve felt, but Eve probably felt the same. Right? But 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 what a beautiful way to give a gift. You know, that was a gift to not just us, but, but the heavenly host, the, 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 the worlds out there, the gift of, of God's love pouring into a small place like earth and showing us what this love is like. I, 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 I'm sure they were excited. They probably skipped across the grass and said, did you taste this? Did you see this? You know, it was just unimaginable. Uh, honestly, was... uh, honestly, I don't even think our minds can comprehend it. Uh, that's what yeah. I'm trying to say right uh, now. So, but, but, yeah. You know, I, Luke, I, Luke, I don't think. Look, look. When God finished make two great light, he makes this great light on the fourth day of the week. Right, and then he create the uh, uh, animal, etc. On the six days, six days he create Adam and Eve. And and you imagine the day, the the the, the night day, the night was like our daylight today. Yes, because our uh, the the moon gives the light at that time. The the what do you call this? The the magnitude, ah, you call that? magnitude? The, the generator the, the generator of the moon god cut it off right now god cut it off after the flood god cut it off right can you explain that uh, you was you you god made you on 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 the afternoon of the six days and then you you going through god all that times until uh, sabbath day on on saturday Right, which we call Saturday today, and 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 not sleep, not sleep. Just keep talking and keep watching. There's no word like Sean said. You can't ex you can explain and, that. And there's nothing they did. Adam and Eve did nothing in creation. Nothing. It was a yeah. gift from God, and that is Amen. why. Amen. I will, I will, I will, we will see redemption is the same way. Exodus twenty verse verse eight to eleven says. Remember the seventh day. It is holy. Six days. And yet, what does it refer to? Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it, you shall do no work. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. And God rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed him the seventh day and hallowed it. Rest. The rest 
has a very important meaning here. And we're going to go into that a little bit more. But God gives another meaning of the Sabbath. And that is why we're going to see what does this rest mean. And we will see how God works and God's powerful working. So God gives the Sabbath more meaning. Have you read in Deuteronomy 5, verse 13 to 15? In the Ten Commandments there? What is the yeah, other meaning? Observe yeah. the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. This is, right? The Lord your God has commanded you. Verse 13. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. And verse 14. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it. You shall do not any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your animals, nor any of your foreigner residing in your town, so that you, male and female servants, may rest as you do. Remember, you were, remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your, your God, that the Lord your will be my took you out with a mighty hand outstretched arm therefore the lord your god has commanded you to observe the sabbath day so what's the meaning here that the sabbath is more meaning more meaning some 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 christian believe some christian believe we can keep any day we want to right uh, you just read exodus chapter 20 verse 8 to 11 in those verses, one, uh, one, two, three, four verses, in these four verses, there is a key point into this one. What was this key point many Christians did not see yet? That God stopped Anybody? his work and he blessed that it. And he, he, hello, that, he, yeah, that he blessed it, he made it holy, and he sanctified it. Did he do that to the other day? They can't see this one, <laughs> you know? The other, the, the other thing I want to add with that is that on creation or in creation, during creation, in creating humanity, Adam and Eve, us, in his image, God done a great work that I think, I, I can't say for sure, I'm going to say I think he never done anywhere else in the universe. When he created us, it says he created us in his image, mm. in his likeness. And then also when he created us, we are now able to procreate in our images with our children. And unfortunately, we lost the image of God in the garden when we ate the forbidden fruit. And we're not going to go into that because that's not your subject today. But since then, now kids are created in our image, which means they are selfish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and one thing for themselves and stuff instead of being loving and kind like we were originally created. But but honestly, the, the point I'm making is that that we are a special creation done by God. Special. I never read where it said that angels were able to procreate. I, 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 I'm not saying they can't, but I haven't read that in the Bible. And I think that we need to when we look at worshiping God. We have to think of what he has created in us. And I'm going to stick to my words. Adam and Eve didn't know what to say. Mm. The, word, the, the other translation, Sean, they said, um, God create us lower than the angel. As you just mentioned, the angel cannot procreate. Mm. procreate it. Now, when you look at uh, the Bible in Hebrew, he said, God made us lower than God himself. Oh. That's what he said, let, let us make men in our own image. Mm. We are a little bit lower than God. Oh. Not the angel, <laughs> and God. <Wow. laughs> you, you see? Yeah. <laughs> that is powerful. If you're thinking about this, that is powerful. Yeah. That's, that's what it says in, it, in the Hebrew. That's what he said in the Hebrew, lower than God, not lower than the angel. Some translation puts that, but check it yourself into Hebrew, lower than God. That wow. powerful. 
I'm telling you, man. And in, <laughs> and in Hebrews in chapter two, um, uh, I can't recall the ex uh, exact verse, but I, in Hebrew chapter two, it says that we will, will again rule in the, in the new heaven and the new earth. It mm. didn't say anything about other angels ruling down there. It's us with God. We are co-rulers with God. Amen. But it's, it's, it's more a rulership as in um, like God shun it. It's a rulership that we don't want. It's just we will be giving of ourselves because we know so much of what God has given to us. Mm. That is the kind of rulership. So, so God, so, so, so in this, in Deuteronomy, it speaks about that God brought them out of what? Out of slavery, right? But what happened before they were set free of slavery? They had the Passover. Mm. Remember the Passover. So, so what happened in the Passover? What did the Passover represent? It represented the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It was a symbolic representation of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And now we come to the, to the essence that has so much meaning for us. And we will see it in creation. We will see it in our lives and we will see this re redemptive aspect of rest. This, this redeeming uh, 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 aspect that will redeem us, this rest that will redeem us out of our sinfulness. So John 19 verse 30 to, and 31 says, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. Now, where did you hear that before? In creation. At creation, he says it here. Remember when he, when he created the earth, he says, it is finished. And here he says, it is finished again. Then bowing his head, he gave up the spirit since it was the preparation day, a day before Sabbath. Exactly in creation, the Jews <laughs> did not want the bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath for that the Sabbath was a special day. They didn't want him to remain. John 17 verse, verse 4, so the word finish is so important. It is finished. John 17 verse 4, again it shows here. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. I have finished the work. God finished the work. And then God rests. Think more about what this rest means in the importance of the work. Finish the work. Here we see God rested. We know, we know that the Holy Spirit still works. So when God rested, did the Holy Spirit stop resting? So God never stopped resting. So the rest has a deeper meaning to it. Because then what actually happens in us when we rest in God and when God rests this case? It's the Holy Spirit that starts working in our hearts. Now remember what was the earth like, right? I'm going to read it now. And remember who flew over the earth. And because we are sinners, we can see that here the Holy Spirit is still working. It's an opportunity for us to do something. God stops his demonstration. He stops his demonstration. Like in creation, he stopped his demonstration of his love for us. Crucifixion, he stops his demonstration. Then he says, rest. But we know that he doesn't rest. Through the Holy Spirit, he does something special. Let's go to Genesis 1 verse 1. And you were speaking about the light chains. Genesis 1 verse 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. The earth was without form and void. Listen to that. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. Then what did God say? Let there be light. And there was light. Now compare this verse in thinking of the crucifixion and creation. John 1 verse 1 to 5, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. In him was life, and life was the light of all people. The light shines in darkness, 
and darkness did not overcome it. We saw it in the beginning and we see it in the cross. The light shine, God's demonstration is light shine. And then it starts shining in our hearts when we rest. So here's a clear demonstration how important this resting in Christ is. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. I'm going to read all the verses, 4 verse 6. For God who said, let, the, let light shine out of darkness, may this light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So when Jesus died on the cross, when he said, now rest in me, that light gets poured into us. And it's, it's part of a relationship. It's coming together. It's part of a relationship. So now, what is this light? Clearly it says there, light of the knowledge of the glory of God. Here we speak again in the face of Jesus Christ now. So now what we have seen in the life and death of Jesus, when he, when he rested in the grave on the Sabbath, we then reflect upon his demonstration and we are filled with the light of his glory, which is his beauty. It has so much significance for us today to worship God. So much significance so that our fountain may be filled, so that our hearts may be filled with the light of life. And that is what we are. You know, when this world was given over, like you said, Sean, to Satan, when this world was given over to Satan, not fully over to him, but when Adam and Eve surrendered, that light went out. We, be, we became void and without form. We became the darkness. That is why God had to come and, sit and, 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 and turn that darkness, bring the light to, to this mental darkness, to what's the word, not this mental, to, to destroy it. So, now let's go to Psalms. Psalms 51 verse 10 to 12 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Wow. The Holy Spirit has such a... God said to his disciples, I must go away. I must... I must give you something more. And that is what the Sabbath represents. A time for us to think, to meditate, to adore, to, to behold, to, to, to really show God the worship he needs. Not by force, but by changing our hearts and minds about who he is so that we can trust him. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. It is so beautiful. Does this sound like rest and peace that he's speaking about? Restore the joy of your salvation. We rest. You're only going to restore something that you had before. Exactly. That is what the light was that we had before. We rest by faith in, he, in his finished work. <laughs> we rest by faith in his finished work work of salvation and of creation like adam and eve rested as well in creation the the rest is the redemptive and restorative meaning as well it is the sabbath the rest that we find ourselves in christ we can see it in the beginning was important and today hebrews 4 verse 1 to 9 1 sorry hebrews verse 4 verse 1 and then you can read verse 9 and verse 10. Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, like you said, James, it still stands. Let us be careful that none of you be found not to be fallen short of it. Why does he say this? Why do you think he says it? Because our cups needs to be filled. The spirit of God needs to, to come into our life. 
there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest, also rests from his own work, just as God did from his. What does it mean here that we rest from our own work? We'll discuss it later. Let me finish and then we can, can discuss it. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30 says, Come to me, all who labor in a heavy laden, and I will give you rest. <clears throat> Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely of heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10. I'm, I'm finishing now, my brothers. Listen how beautiful. Follow this verse. Ephesians 2 verse 8 to 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not the result of, of works so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship. You see that word workmanship? Adam and Eve was God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for the good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You were speaking about that it was there before. God has always prepared this beforehand. God has always asked, desired us to worship him and have him as our ultimate worship and open our hearts. But memorialism, the memorial <coughs> is so important if you understand the value of what the Sabbath means and you will keep that memorial. I am finished. Yes, uh, when you're talking about the significant sign, and all the verses you have been mentioned, Genesis, John, uh, Hebrew, and uh, as a Matthew, Matthew as well. And, and also I heard you many times mention about the light. Yep. Uh, it's very important. I, I, I will share with you uh, a phrase in the Great Controversy, page 612 in paragraph one. It just include all those things out of it. He said, the great work of the gospel, which is mentioned light before, the great work of the gospel is not to close with less manifestation of the power of God than market, market it opening, its opening. The prophecies, which were fulfilled in the outpouring of the former rain at the opening of the gospel are uh, again to be fulfilled in the later rain at its close. Mm. Miracle, miracle will be wrought. Mm. The sick will be healed. Mm. A sign and wonders and sign and wonders will follow the believers. Satan's also, Satan's also work with lying wonders, even bringing down fire from heaven in the sight of men. Oh. Revelation chapter 13, verse 13. Thus, the habitants, uh, habitants of the earth will be brought to, the, to take their stand. That is very powerful word. Mm. And, and, and when we see in late, uh, in early rain, what did happen, the miracle, the healing, and great controversy said that will happen again. Mm. And, and also he said, Thus the, the inhabitant of the earth will be brought to take their stand. Mm. It must be something very serious will happen. And also God will manifest on his people at that time. You will see things up, keep happening. But the devil will work like he never worked before as well. Yes. And I do believe he will put a foot on this earth and everybody will see him. Mm. Everybody. That's what I believe. But yeah, we'll see. As a question. 
I've got one question that I would like to ask, but that's why I want to wait on your question. I spoke too much, yes. I said, yes. Anthony and, and Rod and Sean, their question, I'm talking. <laughs> yes, Anthony. Uh, well, first of all, I really want to thank you for the presentation. And um, I, I enjoyed trying to imagine what it was like that first Sabbath for Adam and Eve. Um, then uh, I was just thinking it's very instructive in, in what it tells us about the Sabbath. It's not that God said, well, today is Sabbath. I need you to um, spend time in creation. You know, it wasn't a command. It was something irresistible in a way. Like the way the world was made, it called for their curiosity to explore, right? So they just had to find these things and see them. They could not but spend time in creation. Right, so um, what I wrote down is the Sabbath is not a command, but a celebration. Amen, but that so, is true. You know, if you go to a wedding, you, you are not commanded to have fun at a wedding or even to come, right? You're invited. You are invited to come. I, can't co I cannot command you to love me, huh? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, this, this is this is a vo so the Sabbath is a voluntary thing that we must do if we Celebrate. want. Celebrate. No, it, it, even the word must is you know we say must because we love God, but really, it's an invitation. Will you be coming to the party? Amen. So it's it's not. Um, I, I just thought it's very important to. So it's not something that we, we, we should argue to sort of say, you need to do it, otherwise, you know, you need to do it, otherwise. This, if people have been to a party, they can call you, you need to taste this, but they're not commanding you. They're just saying, I'm really enjoying this. So we need to, um, in, in my opinion, and anyway, this is my experience of the Sabbath, the older I get, the more I realize um, how much I love the Sabbath. Uh, because of the time of God to, to, to spend time really exploring so many different ideas and then just to relax and then try and make sure you're not overworking your brain. Um, it's wonderful. So uh, that's the only thought that I had there uh, from uh, the, the thought that you put for us about what the Sabbath, the first Sabbath was like. Yeah, but I, I wanted think... to just ask quickly, I've got two questions now. You were speaking about humanity in the creation, which was beautiful. We discussed it so beautiful. What do you think, what went in heaven? We know the disciples were in different places, not knowing what's happening to Jesus. So when Jesus was resting in the grave, what happened in heaven? All eyes were focused. <laughs> yeah. All eyes were, I, I think my opinion is that there was a lot of were they, process in heaven. Remember when we were speaking the word seek, were they seeking? What happened but, here? Yes, exactly, exactly. Not only that, like if, uh, if you try to think about it, if you lived in Jerusalem and you knew there was this man who was healing people <laughs> and he was, he, because there was a lot of noise about him that week and you hadn't been healed yet, and you would be hoping you would see him that Sabbath because you heard he can cure people on Sabbath. So that Sabbath, the Sabbath that followed this crucifixion was a Sabbath for everybody who loved Jesus was a Sabbath for everyone to think about what just happened, to talk about that stuff, to wonder about where he was, what happened, why did they kill him? This was his life. So it was a contemplative Sabbath because it could not have been otherwise, because he died in such a way that you had to talk about it tomorrow, like you had to talk about it on the Sabbath. So it was a Sabbath spent in contemplation of the cross here on earth. Um, and I think we can easily extrapol extrapolate that that's the same thing that was happening in heaven, that there, there would have been wonder over what has happened. There would have been conversation over, what has he done? They would have been praised. So he, many people think the victory was on the resurrection. 
yes, in a way there was victory at the resurrection because that's when human beings could see. But in terms of vanquishing the devil, the victory, like overcoming the devil was on that sub, on that Friday evening. That's why it was finished. Because, when he died. You know, in the, the old video games, they were like, finish him, right? <laughs> so that was, that, that's when, that was it. That was the winning, uh, his dying was the victory. So yeah, I hope you are happy with that answer, Hyper. <laughs> oh, good. Anybody else? I think I think I think this when Christ died on the cross, it was like, okay, I rest my case. <laughs> you know, <laughs> point is being done. Um, I I just trying to put my thoughts together. Um, in the Ten Commandments, you know, we have the first fourth um, that it talks about: you shall not have other gods before me, and you shall not make yourself an image in the form of anything, etc. It's and it says on the second one, you shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Yeah. And then the third it says, you shall not misuse misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. And the fourth is about the Sabbath. So the, the first, fourth commandment and the, uh, and, and the last six, they kind of split in there because the other ones are, you, you should not kill, you should not lie, you should not envy, you should not do this. But the first four is mostly about worship. Yes. And and it's interesting that it goes in kind of a crescendo from the first one to the fourth. Um, and I just realized that when on the third, where it says, you should not misuse the name of the Lord your God, you know, we, we talk about don't misuse the name of the Lord in vain. Um, it's not actually the, to me, I think it's not just the name, you know, <coughs> uh, even though people now, yeah, use the name of the Lord in, 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 in very bad ways. But I think if we are Christians, then the name of a person in the Old Testament meant to represent his character, how that person was, you know, what kind of person was. So if um, maybe if someone was a little bit of a rebel, he, he would have a name that it would indicate that he was like that. You know, so the name of the Lord represents God's character. And if I'm saying, okay, I'm a Christian, right? And I tell everybody that, I, you know, that I'm a Christian and, I'm, and I go and my behavior does not represent God's character, then I'm misusing his name, even though I may not even mention his name, you know, but, but what I'm doing saying that I'm a Christian and other people knowing that and say, well, it doesn't look like he's a Christian. I'm misusing God's name. That's what I think. Mm. So if um, worship is about um, emulating God's character in you, so we become what we worship. So if you play video games eight hours a day, seven days a a week, it's not going to be healthy for you, right? <laughs> especially if it is a violent video game. It's not going to be healthy. So, but if we worship the character of God, God knows how the universe works best and is work best on love, on thinking about others and not about ourselves. So when we worship God, we're worshiping and emulating his character we're mm -hmm. trying to be like him mm -hmm. and i came to understand that just not long ago because you know some years ago i went to this first four commandments and go oh god is jealous but how come god be jealous you know that's a kind of a human um feeling you know god shouldn't be jealous what sort of a god is that that is jealous uh, is he, he wants je our he worship or zealous? Uh, jealous. on my version he says jealous, jealous. Yeah, yeah i think it should be zealous yeah that doesn't matter i don't know okay. uh, but 
anyway, so I had this understanding, and I think many people maybe still have, um, that God is jealous, he wants our worship. But the reason that he wants our worship is because he loves us. And by that, if we are like him, he knows that that's best for us. So it's not mm. like, I want to be loved. You know, I'm the only God in the universe and I want to be loved. It's not that. I think it's quite the opposite. It's because he loves us that he wants our worship because then we become like him. Yeah, it's not selfish or... Um, exactly, right. It's yeah, not yeah. And that is what the cross represents. So just quickly. So when, when the angels were talking, they were saying, God, how could you allow your creatures to kill you? How could you allow them? Why didn't you do something? You should have done something. But you didn't. You, you even said, forgive them. How can you forgive a person that kills his, crea creature, his creator? How, how is this possible? God, you are unselfish. We can see that now. You have given all for us and kept nothing back. Man, I, I, I think the beauty of that is exactly what you were saying there. It, it God never did this of any selfish thing. And that's why I, I use the word gift because it's always a gift that God is giving to us. Anybody else? Um, yeah, I wanted to add to what Rod was saying in, in, in regards to the word jealous and stuff like that. And I think we all understand that's not a selfish jealousy. jealousy. He's just saying, you, you got to remember the context of the Ten Commandments being given when they've just been delivered out of bondage from, from Egypt. They've been 400 years in slavery and they've forgotten their God, some of them. They've forgotten their relationship. They've forgotten the Sabbath because, man, they were working seven days a week. Yeah. You know, 15 no hours a day, maybe, you know, or something like that. And what he's saying is, I need you to come back and worship me only because I'm the only one that can heal you. I'm the only one that can set it all right. I'm the only one that knows how to represent my character. And I know how to demonstrate and show it to you. And as we've all heard and, and said before, by beholding, you become changed. So uh, if they worshiped other false gods and other uh, images and calves and um, what beetles and alligators or whatever, you know, they worship, they would become like them, you know what I mean? Uh, and stuff like that. And God saying, that that's not worthy of, of worship. That doesn't elevate humanity. The only way you can be elevated is by worshiping me. Mm. And then that's what God is saying. So if you wanna if you wanna worship another being, being. or created being, then you you aspire as high as that being is. Yeah, yeah, you aspire as high as that being is. But if you want to worship <laughs> me, the creator, then yeah, then it's it's limitless because I'm gonna continue to reveal my love with you. As you said, the Sabbath is about love. Spending time, it's a relationship. The more you spend time with someone, the better you get to know them. Mm. And, and it's like worship. That. It's worship. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Worship. yeah. So, so, so that's what God is saying. He's saying like, look, if you worship these other things, these other creatures, these other images and these other idols, you will become like them. But if you, if you worship me, then you will become more like me. Back being restored, being restored back into the image of God that we lost at creation. You know, so often where we have a problem, when we read the Bible, we said, I want to know what God wants to say to me, personally to me. But mm. the Bible tells us about God. What's about, what this word said about God? Because Jesus Christ himself said, you read the Old Testament, <coughs> you thought you will have life, <coughs> He's talking about me. Hmm. And now when we read the Bible, we said, what God said about me, you know, <laughs> we get it wrong. You know? <laughs> we have to see what that said about God. And, it's, and, and also when we read the history, like you just mentioned about Egypt, about as a place as well, when people of God go to captivity, just read, hmm. just read the story. You will see the character of God into this 
is a story. Mm. That how we learn about God. <laughs> yes. Now, now I, I want to ask this question because it always comes up, right? We are know that mm. we are saved by faith. And we were saying by beholding God, uh, we become like God. Now, when Amen. God says here in verse in Hebrews chapter four, he says, God also says, rest from your own work. What do you think that means? And I'm going to ask a question afterwards because I want to ask the question. If God, as if we behold, is it only that we behold God that's enough? Or, or, or what about the people that, that, that still steals or lies and, 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 and they say they're Christians, they go to church each week and worship. So, so what does it mean? Rest from his own work, from your own work. He says to us, we must rest from our own work. And in other place as well, you can see the Bible said the Sabbath was made for you, for mankind, not a Sabbath made for you, but not you for the Sabbath. Yeah, but, yeah. That means the rest was made for mankind because the mankind need rest, especially in the times we're living. We need rest, but rest not need us. We need the rest. You see? And, and also, if we become like God, you will see all those Sabbath day as a commandment make sense in your life. Mm. Yeah. But... um. Um, Hyper, say your question again. So my question is, God says we must rest from our work. My first question. Yeah, our works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what is it to, to, to rest from our work? All right? Yeah. And my second question is then, where does works come in? You know, when God says you must do this, when does it come in? I'll give, I'll give a simple illustration for your first question about, about words. Many people think that we can tick particular boxes that will gain us access or entry to heaven. So, you know, I, I must be a good person. So then I discipline myself to be able to be a good person. And um, that is your work? Well, yeah, well let me finish. Um, and then, um, so I'm disciplining myself. So I'm ticking this box. You know, I go to church on the Sabbath. I, I'm part of the board. Um, I feed the, 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 the needy. I give clothes. I visit in prison and all that stuff. But it's not boxes that we tick because it gets us into heaven. It is, it's things that we, or the way we live because God has already changed our hearts and preparing us to be in heaven with him. So the works, you said, where does the works come in? The works come in as when we, in our trust in God. We, we trust God. So then in trusting him, good works do come. Now, because God is in our hearts, now we start to do those things, not because we tick in boxes, but because we love God and we love others. Mm -hmm. To know God is eternal life. Mm -hmm. To know him, we have to know him. Mm -hmm. What kind of God we worship? What mm -hmm. kind of character? Like, <laughs> yeah. like um, in... in, in, in uh... What Rod was saying about um, using the Lord's name in vain, it's his character. So there's so many Christians, like you said, that, that uses his name in vain, that, that, that doesn't show the character of God. Mm. Why is that? Is that they, they say, yeah, we rest in God. You know, we don't worry about work. So how does it actually work? You, you, say, you will know the tree by their fruit. So a person that, that doesn't have the works, let's say the works, the, the lifestyle, right? Are we supposed to judge that? Is, are we supposed to know that? Do we know that? Wait, wait, wait. You're asking, you're asking two questions. You're saying... Yeah, I'm asking a lot of them? questions. You're saying we're supposed to judge them and are we supposed to what? Know them. Well, well, yeah, like James said, the Bible says you'll know them by their works, but you're not supposed to judge them, no. No, no, not at all. Uh, God says, uh, uh, who are you? He says you will know them, but he didn't say you can judge them. And plus people who think that they know good fruits, judging fruits is, is harder than you think. And that's why so many people go to the local grocery store and think they picked a good mango out. Then when they get home, they eat that mango. Oh my goodness, I got another bad one. You know what I mean? Uh, judging fruit is, is really hard. And how much more is it for us who don't know the human heart? Only God knows the heart. 
And, and I just want to answer, try and answer Rod's question. Let me answer my own question. I do believe there are people that cheat. And, and cheaters won't enter heaven. If you don't rest in Christ, if you don't rest in Christ, like we were talking today, you won't bear the fruit like you were saying, James. You don't know God. If we don't rest in Christ, you won't have the works. It does, it, it, it's, 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 it's designed that way. So we don't even have to argue about works. Like if you say, oh, you're saved by faith. What about works? You're saved by faith. It's what God says and it's finished. Because if you don't have the works, you don't have faith. Hmm. It's as simple as that. You don't really have faith or trust in God or you aren't resting in God. That is the thing. Don't, uh, don't try and argue the, the works. Rather argue, does this person have faith? Or not argue, it's not our worry. But we should find ourselves in faith with Christ, in trust with Christ, and God will lead us into all truth. I, I, I agree what you just said, Ivan. It seemed like last week we're talking about when we born, we born sinful. Yeah. It's not because the sin we do every day will make us sinful, because we have to understand that we born sinful. And in sinful, you have cheated as well. Yes. Uh, when you said sinful, we're talking about cheater, any sin, you can mention it. But many cheater, many sinful person will be in heaven. Why? Because of God, because of the mercy of God and his character, his government, he loves us so much. Look at look at David. Go to, to Hebrew chapter 11. The adultery. You have, oh, you may, you may, you name it. If anyone who, who hear us talking right now, you have all those problems, don't discourage. God wants you to come back to him. to him. He wants you to live with him forever and ever and ever. You know, I done a lot of bad things in my life myself. I am mean, still a bad person in many ways, probably. And even Paul said, I am a chief sinner in this world. Mm -hmm. You know, but he said, thank Jesus Christ. Uh, he, he saved my life. And I believe that too, you know. And don't discourage anybody who listen to us. There is a chance for you. Just give your heart today to Jesus Christ. It will save you. Believe me, 100%. Mm. Believe me, I my think, sister and my brother. And James, I think um, the closer that people get to God, the Just more, sin the more <laughs> sinful that they feel. You're which right, is, my brother. <laughs> which is maybe a good sign. You know, it's yeah, a good it sign. Is, it is. Because, um, yeah, some people say, oh, I'm not a sinner. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I do nothing wrong. There they go. Okay. Okay, let's bow heads for prayer. Anybody still want to say, you want to say something, Andrew? Uh, uh, Anthony? Look, I think, I think we, better, we better pray so we don't uh, keep yep. going and then we can chat later. Okay. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our dear Lord, we are so thankful for the privilege and the gift you have given to us, life. You've given us life, Lord, to live this life and to make choices in it. But let our first choice be always you, dear Lord. Mm. Let us find our rest in you in the morning when we wake up, in the evening when we go to bed, and during the day, may we be in connection, in connection, connected to you, united to you, dear Lord. I pray that we may enjoy worship because I believe it's an enjoyable thing to observe the beauty of you, dear Lord, to observe your glory, to shine that glory into our hearts. And when our cup is full, it will run over to others. Fill us, dear Lord, with your spirit. Let the work of your spirit give us the rest we need. Mm. Give us the peace, the love, and your character, dear Lord. Father, we lay before you as sinners, imperfect in every way. 
but our lives are made perfect in you. Forgive us and help us to stay at your feet. Help us to stay underneath the faucet or the, the depth of the fountain to always stay full. Bless us, dear Lord, as we go away from here in your wonderful name, your wonderful son's name, Jesus Christ, who has shown us who you really are. Amen. 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 Amen.